So let's talk about carbon monoxide. Now, a lot of people say, I have a carbon monoxide detector. I'm not worried in my house about it. You should worry. And in fact, we're going to test them to show you exactly how these work right now. The first thing to understand is that we've got a range of them. This one right here is kind of special. It's a professional version. This is what like firefighters would wear. And, and interestingly enough, Corbett used to wear this all the time, um, particularly when doing his jobs, and would occasionally pick me up and take me out to dinner. We went to a very nice restaurant in Chicago once, and as soon as we sat down, this little guy started going off. Not to say don't go eat at fancy restaurants in Chicago. My point is that carbon monoxide leakage can happen anywhere. So of course we call the manager over and just let her know, don't scream about it, don't evacuate anybody, but you have a low level carbon monoxide problem in here. Do you ever have headaches, for example? And she said, I have headaches every day. So this is the kind of thing that you should worry about. The carbon monoxide monitors that are on this table do not do what you think they do. And the ones that are in your house, you may be completely overestimating. So the first thing that you're gonna do when you buy a device that's going to save your family from life-threatening situations is... You're gonna open up this open long up your manual. manual. Maybe you have one. <laughs> and you're just, you're gonna sit down, do a little light reading. Okay, so. Of course you read this, uh, but we just want to point out a couple of things in here to you. There's an English side and a Spanish side. Mm -hmm. And on the English side, we've highlighted something that they say again and again and again. Warning, this is going to protect your family from immediate death. It is not intended to protect people with respiratory issues or cardiac issues or older people or pregnant people or children. Basically anybody with a compromised immune system because either your body's working hard to make a new baby or you're elderly or you're young or you have asthma. In those cases, the manual of any one of these that you would buy will tell you, you need something better. And we have a better one on the table that we're gonna show you. Uh, but essentially, these things are not for protecting your family from health effects. They're protecting you from immediate death and potentially horrible fire things happening. But Corbett, with these devices, they've all been UL rated, correct? Which is like a code for these kinds of machines. Right, it's a certification that a lot of people say, oh, it's UL listed, it's safe. It means that it's been tested and it meets certain standards um, that the people who make rules are in favor of. In fact, not all of the things on this table are UL listed. These two cheapo guys are UL listed. These two are not UL listed. This one is for OSHA safety. This is gonna protect me when I'm working around dangerous carbon monoxide scenarios. Absolutely not UL. What the UL listing says is that these two, which are listed, are to sound at certain levels within a certain period of time. And so, looking at the Back to our big, wonderful guide, which again, you sat down and read. So if this alarm senses 400 parts per million of carbon monoxide, it must alarm between four and 15 minutes. That means that if it's 400 parts per million or more, it can't go off until four minutes have gone by. If it does, it's considered defective and it would be thrown out and they would replace it with another one that won't go off until four minutes have in fact passed. But then it can't go off later than 15 minutes. What happens to your body at 400 parts per million after four minutes? 400 parts per million is where we start having, potentially, you're going to die in a few hours. If you breathe this kind of air, the carbon monoxide is getting into your body and it's replacing the oxygen in your cells, and you do that for a number of hours, you would become unconscious and then you won't be able to move out of the house and you would keep breathing it until you're dead. That's why, also in these instructions is take this really seriously. A common joke with people who do what we do is what happens when your carbon monoxide detector goes off? Turn it off. Take out the battery, exactly. Um, because, oh, it's making noise, it can't be. I don't smell anything. I don't smell anything. Carbon monoxide is odorless and it's tasteless and you can't tell that it's there. If any of these, especially the UL listed, what we'll call the more blunt instruments goes off, you must pay attention to it because you are putting your family in immediate and lethal danger. When these machines go off, what that means is you need to evacuate everyone from the space that this is going off in. You should also air out your home and you should call 911.
this is a big deal. We have had firefighters who worked for us and they've sit, told us lots of stories about people saying, oh, it's probably no big deal. It's been going off for a couple weeks and we don't know why. The entire ceiling is on fire where you can't see it, just smoldering. So one other thing. 400 parts per million is really high, but let's look at a much lower level. It says, if the alarm is exposed to 70 parts per million of CO, it must alarm between 60 and 240 minutes. What does that mean? Okay, so this is what that means. The things that are creating carbon monoxide in your house, water heaters, furnaces, heating appliances, your fireplace, maybe if it's not burning efficiently, stoves, things like that. It's combustion. Exactly, when you're burning not well. When those are created, this is gonna give an allowance for if it's over 70 parts per million for more than an hour, then it should sound within four hours. How many of those appliances that we just listed are gonna run for more than an hour solid? Even when you bake, and I live with a baker, She's not baking for more than an hour, so the thing's no. gonna shut off. This is not going to go off. So you could have potentially significant levels of carbon monoxide, and in fact, remember that the 70 parts per million is for a healthy, average adult. Anybody else who's developing, elderly, or sick in some other way needs to take care to have something else, and we have better things here. So this is the one that's the most expensive, and we're gonna go ahead and test it first, just so that you can see. I have bottled carbon monoxide. This is not something that you would have at home. This is something that professionals would have. Uh, this is 200 parts per million. And so, of course, this is going to both show us the level that it's breathing, and it's also going to start letting us know immediately. So you've got the lights flashing, and the number is reading at 192. So it's 192 parts per million. We're going up to 200 parts per million with this bottled carbon monoxide. This is called a bump test, and I do this regularly just to make sure that this monitor is breathing the right amount. I know for a fact that it's 200 parts per million, so if this says 200, it's right on the nose. <laughs> now that this has stopped screaming, we're gonna go ahead and put this close to our face so that... Make sure that the carbon monoxide is not gonna get... We know that we're not endangering much. Grace. That's okay, I got this. All right, we're gonna first run a non-UL listed. This is called a low level monitor. Let's see what this does. Now the sensor for this is right over here. Go ahead and kick this on the same way that we were. Okay, so we've hit 51 parts per million. And the way that this is set up is the same as the other type. It will sound when you have a situation where it's a health risk. One minute of 50 parts per million, 95 parts per million isn't really going to be the problem. Will you go ahead and open this up? Mm -hmm. Of course, you read the manual of all of the life-saving devices. And so if it senses this one? five parts per million, just a tiny bit, it will start flashing at you. If it senses between five and 500 parts per million within one minute of detection, it will continuously display a light and sound an alarm. And so we're at 153. Once you pass 150, this is going to start screaming at you, no matter what, within an instant. All right, we will turn that off. Okay, now that we're down past 150, I can silence it and I can investigate. The great thing about this is that it actually went off instantaneously, the minute it went past 150 parts per million. At lower levels, at five parts per million, at 20 parts per million, at 30 parts per million. It'll give you alarms if there is a situation where it's gonna be impacting somebody's health. Again, one minute of it isn't really gonna do it, but you can see in your low level carbon monoxide monitor manual, which explicitly says this is not UL listed, which is required by code. So you have to also have one of these installed in your house if you're gonna have this because it doesn't meet code, weirdly. It exceeds code. So we're gonna go ahead and test this guy. We'll get it fired up too. And the breathing, what's hilarious is that this tiny little hole up here is the most important part of this device. That's where it breathes in the carbon monoxide. So one of these interesting things it says in here about what you need to know about CO, aside from it being odorless, tasteless gas. After saying it comes from fossil fuels and fire, it says CO is a real danger now that homes are more energy efficient. Airtight, 
in quotes. Homes with added insulation, sealed windows, and other weatherproofing can trap CO inside. Which is true of any other chemical that's mm -hmm. going on in here, which is why, again, air tightness, good thing, but you want to pay attention to it. Now, let me just point out to you here, we got 114 showing up on this. So this is nice. The extra money that you spent on this $50 unit went into reading out exactly what is going on. But it's not going to tell us that something is wrong. In fact, it's not allowed to because it's UL listed until a certain point has been hit for a certain amount of time. Because again, this is not about keeping your family from being low level poisoned over a long period of time by small amounts of carbon monoxide. This is for lethal situations. So the other one here, $20 unit, we're not even gonna bother to test because you can't see a readout and it won't alarm because it's not allowed to. It would be considered defective if we were to sit here for an amount of time that you wanna pay attention to carbon monoxide testing on. One of the really important things to remember when it comes to low level exposure making you sick is that you can get headaches, you can get nausea, you can get flu-like symptoms. Often we're running our combustion appliances more in the winter, which is also when the flu spikes. And so frequently you can go into your doctor with flu-like symptoms and more than likely not get tested for carbon monoxide poisoning. Because you might have both the flu and carbon monoxide poisoning, or you might not go to the doctor to get your temperature taken. And you might think you have the flu, and in fact, it's not that at all. It's your heating appliances. So just like you know you need to be your own advocate in the doctor's office, you need to be your own advocate in your own home. Because the UL listed carbon monoxide detectors that are required by law to be in your home are not explicitly not protecting people with respiratory or cardiac issues, anybody who's sick, elderly people, people who are pregnant or children, think for a moment about the type of person who stays at home all day in the winter time. If you're at home all day, it's probably because you're in one of those categories. So of course, every home, in our opinion, should have one of these low-level monitors, at least one, to protect against that kind of a risk.